So for 511, A is to try to determine the net purchases. So we've got beginning inventory, purchases, purchases, returns, and allowances, and then we have to come up with net purchases. What do we know about net purchases? Net purchases is the sum of purchases minus the purchases, returns, and allowances. So that is ultimately going to be $1,500 minus $80. So $1,500 minus $80 is going to give us $1,420, which is net purchases. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now we've got B. Let's go back here. B, cost of goods purchased. So we have our net purchases plus our freight in excuse me, purchases, freight in, cost of goods purchased. So our cost of goods purchased will be our net purchases plus our freight in, won't it? So for this one, our cost of goods purchased will be our $1420 plus our, plus our $130 is going to be $1550 cost of goods purchased. Okay? How many agree with that? Now, we have our cost of goods purchased of $1,550, and we know our cost of goods available for sale will be the $1,550 plus we started the year with $250 to give us our $1,800. Then we do a physical count of our ending inventory that we determined was $310. So how will we know our cost of goods sold? Minus. So we'll take our $1,800 cost of goods available for sale minus our ending inventory of $310. So we'll have our $1,800 Minus, ah, minus our 310 gives us our 1490, and that's our cost of goods sold. Okay? How many of you guys are following? Do I need to slow down a little? Next, let's look at the company L. We started the period with 120. Our purchases were 1080 We know that our net purchases are 1040 So how are we going to determine what our purchase returns and allowances are? Net purchases are going to be our purchases minus our purchase returns and allowances to give us our net purchases. So we'll be able to figure out what our purchase returns and allowances are because if we take our 1,080, subtract from that our 1,040, what would our purchase returns and allowances be? 40 bucks. Okay? Then E. If our net purchases are 1040 but we need to add, to get to our cost of goods purchased, we need to add net purchases plus freight in. Net purchases plus freight in is going to equal 1230. So we know here that with E, 1230 minus our 1,040 is going to equal 
the frayed end of how much? 190? Now, who wants to take F? Can someone take F? F is going to be ending inventory. So you think ending inventory is 120, Martin. And how'd you come up with that? Uh, I think 13, 15 minus 12, Exactly. So again, 1350 minus our 1230 is going to equal our ending inventory of 120. Does that make sense, guys? So now we'll take G. I don't know where my H is, but... Okay. So let's look at G. <laughs> Company N, who wants to take G for us? Oh, Cirrus, can you? What? Can you t do it for us? Yeah. The, the G? How would we calculate the purchases for company N? Put it this way. We know what our net purchases are. We know what our purchase returns and allowances are. Couldn't we add those two together to come up with our net purchases? Okay. So let's take G, our 290, which is our purchase returns, plus our 7410 will give us 7700. Because everything we purchased minus the things we returned will be our net purchases, aren't they? Make sense? And then H. we go to H now, freight in. How are we going to figure out freight in? We have the numbers on both sides. What do those numbers on both sides tell us? We need to subtract cost of goods purchased from what? From net purchases to give us this amount. So H, cost of goods purchased, 8,050 minus 7,410 gives us 640. What if we had freight out in here? Would we, what would we do? Freight out, would we add that to anything in here? No. Why? Because freight out is not a, an inventory item, is it? It's a selling expense, okay? I, if we go to I, cost of goods available for sell. Now, what numbers are used to calculate cost of goods available for sale? Do we start with what we, the beginning inventory? And then do we start with, uh, then do we add to that um, cost of goods purchased? You think? Because that beginning inventory we can use, can't we? So if we take in I 700 plus. 8,050 
That gives us 8750. Then with J, we're dealing with company R. Now, how are we going to figure out J? Beginning inventory plus net purchases, or excuse me, um, cost of goods purchased equal cost of goods available for sale, right? So, how about if we go backwards? If we know um, here, cost of goods minus our inv ending inventory equal our cost of goods available for sale. We know that the cost of goods purchased are going to be 42290 plus our freight in. So don't we know that L is going to be the combination of these two numbers, cost of goods purchased? So if we go down here and finish our L, which is 42290 plus our 2,240 is going to equal our 44,530. Okay? So we can now go back to J here, and we can figure out J by taking our cost of goods purchased of L, right? minus our um, cost of goods purchased minus, excuse me, cost of goods available for sale, 43,530. 43,530 minus our cost of goods purchased. The difference is going to be what we started the year with, won't it? Right? Because cost of goods available for sale is the net amount of everything we purchased minus our beginning inventory. So if we go to J, basically what we can do here is our 49,530 minus our 44,530, that's going to be our beginning inventory of 5,000. Again, let me go back here. We have here cost of goods available for sale, 49,530. We have 44,530 cost of goods purchased. So we need to take that cost of goods purchased plus our beginning inventory to come up with our cost of goods available for sale. How many of you guys are confused on that? Does it make sense? Then, if we have our um, purchases of 43590 minus our returns and allowances, purchase returns and allowances will give us our net purchases. So to complete K, we're going to take our 43590 minus our 42290 to equal 1,300 purchase returns and allowances. Guys, the key here is to understand how you compute where the numbers come from. So what are cost of goods available for sale? It's going to be beginning inventory plus all um, net purchases or purchases for the period, including your freight in. Okay? So, again, helpful to have a template you can work with in order to complete this. Let's work on problem 5-2A. I think that's the only one left. Or I guess we have 5-3A, but they're similar. Um, which should we rather? Let's do 5-2A, and time remaining, we'll do 5-3A. Okay? 
How are you guys doing? Martin, are you okay? Yes. Okay. Five, one A. Five, two A. McCoy Warehouse distributes hardback books to retail stores and extends credit terms of 210 net 30 for all of its customers. <coughs> During the month of June, the following merchandising transactions occurred. Now what we have to do is we are going to record these transactions into the um, uh, make journal entries for them. Who wants to take number one? Kevin? You mind, Kev? So purchase is number one? Yep. We know that our initial transaction, I gave you a hint that we're going to debit inventory and credit accounts payable. But how much are we going to debit for inventory? 1,040. And what our accounts payable will be? 1,040. Hey, let's just think right now, we know we're going to use that, um, discount. Does it matter? No. We're not going to uh, change that discount until we pay the bill. Okay? Kevin, what would happen if it said purchase goods of 1040 plus freight of 60? Would we add them or, or keep that freight out? Would we add freight to our inventory? If we had to pay for freight to get the goods to us, would we add it? We would add it. Okay? Who wants to take the next one? Billy, will you take the next one? Billy, what do we know about this transaction? Are we just going to handle one transaction here, or do we have two things to do? Why do we have two different events that we have to take care of, or transactions here? We've got to show what we sold it for, and then we've got to show the cost of goods because we no longer have those goods available anymore, do we? <coughs> so accounts receivable and sales revenue, what are we going to use have in that? How much did we sell those for? That's what we paid for them. But what did we sell them for? 1200 so our sales revenue we are going to receive is twelve hundred, and we're going to get twelve hundred from the um, customer. But don't we have to take that out of our inventory because we no longer have it there? Mm -hmm. So what are our cost of goods sold? And we're going to reduce our inventory, our credit it by the same amount. Okay. Next one. Kendall, you want to do it for me? $40 credit for books returned to Carlin Publishers. We got a credit for books returned. So obviously we didn't want certain books. We returned them. What does that do to how much we owe them? It goes down. But our inventory also goes down then. We don't have that any inventory anymore. So we'll debit our accounts payable to reduce it. 
and we'll credit our inventory to reduce it. Remember, accounts payable has a normal balance of a credit balance because it's a liability. But when we reduce a liability, we debit it. Inventory is an asset. It has a normal balance that's a debit balance. But when we reduce inventory, we credit it. Don't we? Whoops. Moving on. Who wants to take the transaction on June 9th, Ted? Ted, how much do we owe them now? Well, initially it was going to be 1040 but then we returned 40 bucks worth of inventory. So that makes it now 1000 Are we taking advantage of our discount? You guys think we're taking advantage of that discount? So our accounts payable is 1000 The cash that we're paying them is 980 and we're going to reduce our inventory by 20 bucks because we're not paying them 1000 We're only going to pay them 980 because we're taking advantage of that 2% discount. Can you really Absolutely. So let's talk about that one. We initially bought inventory of 1040 So our initial inventory, inventory, we initially bought 1040 from them on June 1st, right? But then we returned 40 bucks, didn't we? So we, on what day did we return 40 bucks? The 6th, we returned $40, right? So we really, from this time, only owe 1000 But if we take that 2% discount and if we pay the bill within 10 days, we get to write, reduce our, what we owe them by 2%. So we owe them 1000 2% of 1000 is what? Twenty dollars. Okay, so if we pay the bill nine hundred eighty bucks, we're only paying nine eighty, not that extra twenty. So therefore, we have to reduce our inventory by twenty dollars because we're getting it for cheaper, right? So really, our new balance in our inventory is really only nine eighty, isn't it? Does that make sense? And the transaction initially is inventory and a, uh, for 1040 accounts payable 1040 Then when we returned it, we have we reduced our accounts payable by 40 and we reduced our inventory by 40 Then when we paid it, we need to clean up this um, excuse me, this account's payable of 1,000, because here we have 1,040 minus the 40. So we re need to get rid of our accounts payable of 1,000. We need to pay cash. We're going to only pay them 980, which means that 20 bucks we've got to do something with. And we're going to credit it against inventory, because we really don't have to pay the $1,000 for inventory. <laughs> we're reducing the cost of our inventory. Okay? Make sense? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Who wants to take the transaction on June 15th? Connor? Okay. The Goldschmidt Bookstore, how much did they owe us? 1200 Are they getting any kind of benefit from doing it early? Yes. They are? What kind of benefit are they getting from doing it early? Yes. 
McCoy Warehouse distributes hardback books and extends credit terms to everyone for 210 net 30. So we sold books on June 3rd to them and if they took advantage within 10 days then they get a 2% discount. Did they take did they receive it within 2 days? They didn't. So we're going to receive how much money from them? Twelve hundred. And their accounts receivable is twelve hundred. Right? Now what do we do? What happens on the seventeenth? Connor, what happens on the seventeenth? I'm sorry. I'll read it though. Connor? Hey, Connor, question for you. <laughs> I didn't write that. <laughs> Y'all are bad. Okay, Connor, how about you do it again? Because I want to hear your voice. So, what are we going to do there? What's our accounts receivable with them? And our sales revenue, 1200 And then what about our cost of goods sold? We need to put 730 and we will reduce our inventory by 730 okay? Now as we move on, the 20th grant, Smarty Grant, Purchase books on account for 720 from Good Book Publishers, terms 115 net 30. So are we increasing our inventory or decreasing our inventory? Increasing. We're increasing it by how much? 720. 720, and we owe them 720. Okay, so then as we move on, Darren, what's going to happen... <laughs> Um, with um, the transaction on June 24th. So do they have a, a, a discount they get to take yeah. advantage of? So how are we going to figure out that? What were they supposed to give us? 1200 But what are they actually going to give us? 1176. So the sales discount is basically going to be the 1200 um, at 2%, right? Isn't it a 2% discount? And that's going to be um, 24 bucks. Tim, where's Tim? One of these days I'm going to get to know all y'all's names. At least I knew Martin began with an M. Like I say, give me your phone number, I won't forget it. But make me remember your name. I'm terrible. I'm getting good with Kevin because I'm, I'm connecting you with my, uh, ooh, it's 930. Connecting you with my sister's stepson. My sister has a stepson that's named Kevin and kind of looks like you. You know, so you get that correlation. Hey, guys, I want you to finish this. Um, problem, go over the next problem, and we're going to start on Chapter 6 on Tuesday, but I'm happy to answer any questions about Chapter 5 before we start on 6. So, is that okay? Yeah. How are you guys doing? Is it making sense? Are you getting it for the most part? Have a very good weekend. Please stay safe. Okay? Bye, Ted.